I got three okay. <laughs> Cowboys on my list at the moment, and that's sad. It probably wouldn't surprise you to know that for the Cleveland Browns, they said Jarvis Landry. Yeah, he definitely he. I mean, he it's has, hard to run in that grass, man. He has thoughts. It's grass in Cleveland. It's difficult to run in it up there. Um, like, did you see how in the, during the uh, during the All Star game they made Cleveland look like a rocking city? Anyway, the Connor Williams needs a change of center scenery. Whatever is going on when he wears a star, the referees are like, "Hey, watch out for the holding!" Like they they have him locked in. I think he. I think he needs a change of scenery. He's my number two on the list. My number three on the list is Michael Gallup. Uh, the opportunity to be a legitimate number two. He's not. He wouldn't get that here, right? If Amari and sure. and uh, Ceedee Lamb are here. Ah, that's a big if, right there. Right. So, but if but I mean, he's been here for two years with those guys, and yeah. he's not the legitimate number two. I think he is potentially one of those guys. Although sometimes his drops kind of confuse me. The balls that just go through his hands. But man, I, I'd love watching him play. I'm gonna miss him if he's if Michael Gallup goes. I'm gonna miss him because he's been a blast to watch uh, on some like that that touchdown he scored against New Orleans. The rotation in the air, amazing. But he could use a change of scenery. Then the other one, though, I think my number one on the list is Leighton Vander Esch. Okay, I think just whatever he learned while he was here uh, that he that he lost there. You know, during the Mike Nolan season. He, there's just been a lot of stuff that's kind of gone on. I think he just needs another place where he can go, kind of refresh, reboot himself, and say, "Okay, I'm, I still, I know there are there's half people are furious with the hard knocks conversation of you can't do everything while Michael Parsons is out there trying to do everything. You can't make every play. Yeah. It's like really, like you're not trying to make every play. You're not trying to do that. And he's like, oh, I'm a veteran. Like I understand there are plays I can't get to." And that's somebody else's job. But Micah Parsons did such an amazing job that everybody's like, why didn't everybody just play like Micah? And it's difficult to be a Micah-type player. But I think that Leighton Van Der Esch could use another another place where maybe he can get a different set of eyes on what he's doing wrong. Now, I like that answer because that is realistic. From the 214 Dak. Van, Van Der Esch. No, from the oh. 806 Dak, and like, that's cool, but come on. There will be no change yeah. of scenery for Dak yeah. this year so, or the next three years. Yeah, so just focus on like actual like players years, honestly. that could, what's that? I think like eight years for Dak. Yeah, like, I, I, think oh, I could see If that. you're a Cowboys fan and you're not going to be a fan if Dak's the quarterback, you might want to come back in 2031 because it's probably the rest of this decade Dak Prescott is the quarterback of this team. We move to the Cowboys from the nine four zero. Gallup is a better receiver. The Dak is a good quarterback. Disagree. Gallup would flourish under Rodgers or other elite quarterbacks. So you're telling me just the issue that I have with this statement is you think that Gallup is how high in the wide receiver? You'd have to say ranking. a top fifteen receiver in the NFL in the right situation for him to be better than Dak. Yeah, right. And that just—I don't think so. And I like Michael. You think Gallup, Gallup would be a Devonte Adams if Devonte Adams and, and him swap places? No, I don't either. I think Michael Gallup is a somewhere between. 40 and 70 receiver in the NFL. I know that's a big standard, right? What that would be a good number two to a great number three. That's where I think Michael Gallup yeah, gets in the NFL. I, I think I think with a, a really like with a Rodgers quarterback, he's he elevates, but I still see him as a number two receiver. Whereas, and that, maybe that also goes back to an expectation of one A one B. Kevin, we had we were having yeah. that discussion for a long time. Was do we have two ones at the moment? Because Gallup was playing exceptionally well, uh, and we were like, "Well, Amari's a one, but, but you know, right. two ones is having Thielen and Jefferson. Two ones is having it looks like Chase and Higgins. I mean, there's when when you start doing this, you start looking at it and going. And I know he got hurt, but wouldn't you say at this point, Cooper Cup and Woods? Like yes. Woods is better than Michael Gallup. No oh, man, have, uh, I. I was going to say or, Beckham, but yeah, it, it, Cooper Cup and whoever uh, with the way that they run their offense. Yeah, they they were two number ones th last year. And for for Michael Gallup then? I think it was year two. Is He had 1,100 yards and six touchdowns, and we're like, whoa! And that's... And that's, that's what, what I say. Good number two. Yeah, absolutely. And that's it. That you'll take that every single year. 
But obviously, with the addition of C.D. Lamb, those targets have dropped. And, I mean, there's no question that Michael Gallup is your third receiver, like, yeah. or had been yeah. your third receiver. And in terms of the change of scenery, then, I think people seem comfortable, though you have to sign him, too, with pitch picking up Cedric Wilson. And he could be your number three receiver. I think people are completely comfortable with that. Now, Have you seen me, anybody say Randy Gregory? I have not. Do y'all think a change of scenery does anything for him? I actually think it could be detrimental to him, believe it or not. Like, I know all the baggage that he brings here. He has a support I system I think here. That, I think in a little bit of a way, very different. So this is maybe even a bad comparison. I think you might have a Josh Hamilton situation where if he leaves here, they're not going to baby him the way that they've babied him here. And they might just say, no, we're not dealing with your mental crap. And I know I'm using the word crap. It's real, right? Oh, but, Josh Hamilton had a guy that, right. well, who was the, the coach that carried his credit cards for him? I'm uh, drawing a blank. I can, was it Naren? Naren. Was it Jerry G Naren. Yeah. Carried his credit cards for him. He did everything for so him. So I do think to maybe Kevin's point here is if he goes to another team, they might say, you're an adult. We're not, we're not doing anything special here at all to help you. And then that could really hurt him in the long, I don't know. I don't know Randy at all, but it does seem like the Cowboys, it looks like have done a pretty good job. Would you yes. agree with that, Kevin, in yes. helping him? Like, hey, we're going to we're gonna stick with you no matter what. You're the best player in the whole wide world type of deal to make him feel confident. Now, the player that ESPN chose, and it was one of the three that you brought up, and I haven't, I, I saw somebody at the beginning of the segment text this in, but I haven't seen too many people say it beyond that, but I think you're really on with your uh, with your comment, Connor Williams. And Connor Williams is somebody that you view and the rest of the league's going to view, I think, as a starting offensive lineman because he's been a starting offensive lineman for so long. But the fan base seems to have soured on him. Clearly, the coaching staff soured on him here for a minute. And so getting a fresh start, maybe not having the referees, like he's got a target on his back. I'm mm -hmm. not saying he doesn't commit penalties, but he's still got a target on his it, back. Like, I know Mike brings up, Mike's been trying to trade Tyron for about five years now. Sure. Um, I honestly have because of injuries, and I think you can get a whole bunch for him, but people get mad at me for that. I'm not, I guess he's a Hall of Famer. I think he's going to be a future Hall of Famer. But I do think there's a value in when you see a guy hurt that much in trading him. The uh, But, like, I don't think he needs a, a fresh start or a change of scenery. Sure. I think that any change, I would like a Steve Bouchel type thing. Try to trade him so he can go win a championship. That'd be fine. I'm You're not gonna always root, against that. I'm not that. rooting for it. Okay. I'm just saying, like, if that's the, the thing. But somebody did say Lyell. And I get that. Like, throw, throw this down. You just brought up Gregory. Lyell has been kind of babied the entire time. You know, he got brought in. You're part of the future of this offensive yeah. line where you're basically a free agent right out of the gate. And I know that wasn't his fault. That I mean, He got screwed over by a system. That's there. why he might have been so upset, to your point, that he threw this five-game suspension and everything. The Cowboys didn't baby him and tell him he's the greatest thing in the world. And yeah. that's what why he struggled he maybe the, the second consequences. Half. Yeah, and they're like, yeah, we're going to still play Terrence Steele at this point. We're doing pretty good here, so you're not going to just come back and get your spot and everything's just going to be fine and we love you so much. I like the physical player. Like I like him when he's at his best, but how often do I get that is my question. And that's that's the only thing is would that help him if he went somewhere else? He was like, "Man, I better straighten up or this is this could be my last chance." Like I think that always comes to somebody's like maybe that's why they play better that next time because the last team didn't want me anymore. I, and now I have to really get my act together. That's, I'm done. That's a great point. I wish sometimes I knew more about the inner workings of some of these players, like what motivates them. Mm -hmm. Because at the same point, you could say, and this isn't just about Lyle Collins. This is about any number of the people that like frequently, Mike, I know you in the past, you've dubbed the bonus babies, is what is attached to Lyle Collins' name is he was going to get drafted in the first round. Right. So guess what? It didn't work out at his first stop, the Cowboys, if it didn't. He'll go somewhere else, and if it doesn't work out there, I guarantee you another a third team would pick him up and be like, it's a first-round talent. Like, I can't skip on that. So part of me wonders if you're just like, I'll be fine. And then the other part of me wonders which players are driven by, are you kidding me? You didn't want me? The hell with you. Every time we play... I'm going to pancake the hell out of every chump <laughs> you got in front of me, and we're going to win this game. Like Randy Moss did to the Cowboys? Yes!
That definitely happened. Dude, he was now, like, it helped that me. he had generational talent as well, whereas <laughs> Lyle, like right now, you would say most assuredly does not have generational talent, talent or at least doesn't tap into his generational talent, if that is the case. But yeah, Connor Williams was the one that got brought up. Is He started 51 of 57 games for the Cowboys from 2018 to 2021. Sometimes I think the expectation on him was unfair because of, you mentioned Tyron Smith, Zach Martin. They're going to go to the Hall of Fame. Travis Frederick is not, but we all thought he was the best. And for a time, he was recognized as the best. And then Lyle Collins came in and was better than like you could have ever hoped and dreamed for, given the fact that you got him for almost nothing. I think people were expecting that he would slide in and just be the same. And then he wasn't. And people were like, this guy stinks. 